Hello everyone, here we are going to discuss GCSE Physics Paper 1. It's a quick fire quiz, so here is how to use the video. Grab a pen and paper and you need to write down your answers. Pause the video when questions come up on the screen and write the answer to the best of your ability. When you are happy to check the answer, press play and pause it again and you can quickly check when you mark your answers. I suggest that you use two different colours, so I would suggest a purple pen for marking. If you get it right, just put a tick. If you did not get it right, just put a small cross and then use a different colour. Ideally, a green pen to write the correct answers. Let us get started. These first 10 questions are on the energy topic. Please pause the video now and answer these questions. When you are ready for the answers, press play. The unit of energy is joules capital J. Write the equation for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared. What happens to GPE when an object is raised? It increases. The greater the height, the higher the GPE, it increases. Give the formula for elastic potential energy. EPE is equal to half kx squared. State the principle of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. Here you can see questions 6 to 10. Pause the video and do them please. Name two forms of wasted energy in a light bulb. The answers are heat and sound. The amount of sound energy that is wasted by a light bulb is extremely small. If you think about it, the buzzing or this faint hum that you might hear from some light bulbs, especially fluorescent or older ones, is due to small vibrations of the components. What is the unit of power? Power is measured in a unit called watts, or you can call joules per second. You can also write J slash S. It's the same thing. Give the equation power is equal to something divided by time. You can use energy here or work done. They are both okay. Energy divided by time or work done divided by time. Name one way to reduce heat loss from a house. There are multiple ways you can write here. Cavity wall insulation, loft insulation, double glazing, carpets with an underlay, draft excluders, thick curtains, so many things. Define efficiency. We can define efficiency as the proportion of input energy that is converted into useful forms. You can also write the formula, so if you write efficiency is equal to useful energy output divided by total energy input, you get full marks for this. Here are some quick fire questions on electricity topic, and let's do these five questions and I will talk them through when you are ready. What is the unit of electrical current? Electrical current is measured in amps. You can use the short form as amps. Write the equation linking charge current and time. So current I is equal to charge Q divided by time I equals Q over T. What is potential difference? So potential difference is work done per unit charge. So if you think about the formula V is equal to work done over Q, state the equation for resistance. So V is equal to IR, R is equal to V over I. How is current shared in a series circuit? The current is the same through all components in a series circuit. So if you think about a simple circuit like this series circuit, now let's say the current here is 3 amps. That 3 amps will go through the bulb, go through the resistor, still 3, and comes back at the end. So it is the same everywhere. So here are some more questions on electricity. Let's try these questions. How is potential difference shared in a parallel circuit? In a parallel circuit, the PD across each branch is the same. So if you think about this voltage, here is 3 volts, then this will feel 3. This will also feel the same 3, so the PD is the same. What is an ohmic conductor? An ohmic conductor is something that always obeys Ohm's law, which means current is directly proportional to the PD across its ends at constant temperature. So that's what makes a conductor ohmic. And the fourth graph of an ohmic conductor is a straight line through the origin, like this one here. Question number 18. Describe the IV graph for a filament lamp. So in a filament lamp, the resistance increases as the temperature increases. Now when the resistance increases, when you increase the voltage, the current does not increase how you would normally expect from Ohm's law, because filament lamps are non-ohmic. So what happens is the rate at which the current increases decreases. It's still increasing, but here it's increasing more, here it's increasing less, and eventually the current becomes constant. 
Question number 19. What is the function of a diode? Now a diode acts as a valve or one way valve for current. So here you can see a simple circuit. So the current comes this way. The current goes like this and now you can see the current. The arrow that I'm showing here is in the same direction as the triangle in here. So which means if we call this is in the forward bias. So no problem, current will now go like that. However, if you now switch the direction such that your positive terminal is here so that it is trying to give current out in this direction to go like that, it will not take it. So there will be no current. The current here is zero and we call this is the reverse bias. So what is the function of a diode? A diode allows the current to flow only in one direction. Here are the next five questions. Please pause the video and give them a try. When you are ready for the answers, you can press play. The frequency of UK mains is 50 Hz. What is the role of the live wire? The live wire brings the current in, so we can say carries the current to the appliance. What colour is the earth wire? It is a green and yellow striped, like you can see here. Power is equal to voltage times current. Now there is an easy way to memorise this one. People memorise this as P is equal to IV current times voltage. And some people think of this, you know, like an IV leaf. IV, what is the national grid? The national grid is a system of cables, pylons and transformers that distributes electricity nationwide. Here are the next five questions on electricity. Let's pause the video and do the questions. Here are the answers. 26. Why is electricity transmitted at high voltages? To reduce energy loss in electricity transmission, we use high voltages and low current. The reason is power is given by the formula I squared R. So when the current is high, what happens? The power dissipation is high, so you have a lot of heat energy coming out from the cables and that is not good because this is a loss of energy. A step up transformer increases the voltage and decreases current. So a transformer like this, let's say you give an input voltage of 10 volts and you have a large number of turns in the secondary coil. You do not need the number of coil information at this point. Just the idea is the input could be 10 and the output could be 25 volts. So it increases the voltage and the current decreases. 28. What is the purpose of a fuse? A fuse breaks when the current is too high, so it breaks a circuit if the current is above a certain value. Now let's say this is a 3 amp fuse. There is a value on each fuse, and we call this the rating of the fuse. So this fuse consists of a glass cartridge, two metal ends, and a wire in the middle, this one here. So it allows current up to 3 amps. The moment it passes 3 amps, it melts. So when the wire melts, there is a gap in the circuit. Now current cannot go through this gap. Question number 29 is about the formula. V is equal to E over Q. V is the voltage in volts. E is the energy measured in joules. Q is the charge measured in coulombs. So if I make E the subject, I can move the Q to that side. V times Q is equal to E. Energy transfer is voltage times charge. The type of current provided by a battery is DC, or we call it direct current. So the nature of direct current is the battery pushes the current in one direction and there is no reversing like in AC. So if you plot a graph of current against time, it is a graph like that. All right, now let's move to the third topic, particle model. Here are the first five questions. Please pause the video and answer the questions when you are ready for the answers, press play. State the formula for density. Density is equal to mass over volume. D is equal to M over V. In the exam, if they ask you to write a formula like this, rather than writing just the symbol version, it is good to write what they stand for. Or you can write D equals M divided by V, where D is density, M is mass, and V is volume. Make sure you define the terms. What are the units of density? Density can be measured either in kilograms per cubic metre or grams per cubic centimetre. Describe the arrangement of particles in a solid. They are tightly packed, regular pattern, vibrate about fixed positions. What happens to particles in a gas when it is heated? Now when gas particles are heated, they gain kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy increases, which means they move faster and they collide more frequently. 
there will be harder and more frequent collisions. What is specific heat capacity? The amount of energy needed to increase the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Here is the next set of questions. Question number 36 to 40. This is defined as the amount of energy needed to change the physical state of one kilogram of a substance without changing its temperature. Now you can see here on this graph, the solid is being converted into liquid. The bit that I'm highlighting here, or a liquid, is changing into a gas in the bit I'm highlighting here in yellow. So what happens here is a phase change. So the definition is this. Name the two types of specific latent heat. You can have specific latent heat of fusion or specific latent heat of vaporization. So as the name implies, fusion means melting, which is what happens here. Vaporization means turning into a gas, and that happens here. Write the equation linking energy mass and specific heat capacity. The formula here is E is equal to mc delta theta. We need to define the terms. E is energy, m is mass in kilograms, c is the specific heat capacity. Delta theta here is the change in temperature. 39, what happens to temperature during the change of state? Now you can clearly see here it does not change, so it remains constant. Question number 40, which state of matter has the most internal energy? Now the internal energy is dependent on the amount of kinetic energy that the particles have, gas. Now we are moving to the next topic, atomic structure. Pause the video and do the first five questions. Name the three subatomic particles. Protons, electrons and neutrons. Very straightforward. Protons, electrons and neutrons. What is the charge of a proton? This should really be relative charge. So the relative charge is positive one. What does the mass number represent? It is the sum of protons and neutrons. Now you need to use the word sum or the total of protons and neutrons. I've seen a common mistake when I was marking papers. I've seen students say the number of protons or neutrons, and that is wrong. Why? When you say and, you have to add. So the number of protons or neutrons is completely different from number of protons and neutrons added together. Best way would be the sum of protons and neutrons. So for example, if you think about carbon 6, 12, this is the number of protons here. This is the number of protons and neutrons added. What is an isotope? Atoms of the same element with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Now imagine carbon 612 and carbon 614. Here they are the same element carbon, same number of protons obviously, but the mass numbers are different because in this one the number of protons is 6, the number of neutrons is 12, take away 6, we have 6 neutrons. Here number of neutrons is 14, take away 6 and you get 8 neutrons. So same number of protons, six each. But the number of neutrons are different, so these are isotopes. Name the three types of nuclear radiation. Alpha radiation, beta radiation, and gamma radiation. All right, guys, here are the last five questions. Pause the video and do them, please. Which type of radiation is most penetrating? It's gamma radiation. Gamma radiation can penetrate through most material. You need thick lead or concrete to stop. Which type is most ionising? The most ionising radiation is alpha radiation. Half-life is the average time it takes for the number of nuclei to half. Now imagine there is a sample of radioactive material which has 10,000 atoms to start with. Now if the half-life is two hours, in two hours time what will happen? The number of nuclei will halve, so you have 10,000 to start with. That will become 5,000. Now we'll give it another two hours, 5,000 then becomes 2,500. Give it another two hours, it will become 1,250, and so on and so forth. What is radioactive contamination? Unwanted radioactive material, on or in. Now these are really important words. On it or in it. So, this is linked to the theory which explains the difference between irradiation and contamination. In irradiation, we have the radioactive source outside, only the radiation goes to the material. In contamination, it is actually on or in it. So here you can see that in irradiation, the radioactive source is outside 
and the radiation, say beta in this example, go through the sample, now that is irradiation. Contamination is when radioactive substances are on it or in it. Last question, state one risk of exposure to ionising radiation. It can damage or mutate cells, possibly causing cancer. Nice work getting through all 50 questions. That takes real focus and effort. Now here is the fun part. Take a second, add up your score and drop it in the comments below. Seriously, whether you smashed it with a 50 out of 50 or you are working your way up, I would love to see what you did. So go ahead, type it in. 42 out of 50 or 27 and proud or I'm coming back for full marks next time. Anything is fine. Now if you boot, if you got something less than ideal, something that you would like to improve, obviously come back again. I know you have seen the answers, but the whole point is by the time of your exam, if you remember these answers, that is definitely going to be helpful. So you can give it two days and come back, do it again. If you got 35 out of 50 last time, see if you can get to 45 next time or 47 next time or anything more than what you got last time. Good luck for your exams, everyone.